Hey you guys, I hope you're well. Tonight I'm going to take you through a little exercise that I prescribe to a lot of my clients. And this is around relationships and communication at home. I will tend to ask people what their relationships are like with their partners and get a lot of eye rolling and scoffing that um, it's not that great. So it can be that people are just so busy in their lives and focusing on their own things that you never get to see one another at home or it's just in passing. So there's no time to actually sit down and catch up and the tension builds and when you do pass each other in the corridor or tell each other something, it's not that pleasant. It's very passive aggressive or it's like an attack and you don't feel heard, you don't feel like you can speak up and the natural thing to do is either fight all the time and have massive conflict, which is okay at times, as long as you can resolve it, but people find they get in this cycle of just fighting all the time, or um, people can close up and then they just avoid one another. They live under the same roof, but they just, um, yeah, they just ignore each other. So I give this exercise to my clients and I usually say, go home, tell your partner that this is what you need to do. Um, but it often doesn't go down too well because it's come from the partner and maybe it's been misexplained. So I find that I record this video for people and I say, sit down, watch it together. It'll be five or 10 minutes um, so that you're both clear on how to do this exercise. Now, this is an exercise that was given to me and my husband. Um, we both get really distracted with our businesses and our ideas and we can live under the same roof, but we can just work away and not see each other at all. And then before we know it, we're snapping at each other or, yeah, we just haven't spoken to one another. But now we recognise that um, we can actually get along, but we need to have space to what I call debrief and to be able to express our frustrations, which then very soon turns into more appreciation. Um, now, a big excuse that people come up with is, I just don't have the time. And I say, well, if you don't make the time, it's gonna keep turning into this negative spiral downhill. Um, so if you don't wanna work on your relationship, that's fine. Um, but I don't really see it improving miraculously unless you do something to change. Things don't change unless you implement change or action change. Um, so if you want to keep from complaining about your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend and how annoying they are, um, you've got a choice to make a change. And this is a technique that I find works really well for the people who actually do it. So make a time, schedule it in. For example, Gav and I, we catch up at nine o'clock every night that he's around and we will usually just drop whatever we're doing and make sure we go and meet each other at nine to have a catch up. Um, in the early days, I actually think every day is best because usually if you've got tension, you've got a lot of stuff to offload and um, discuss with one another. However, if you can just at least start off once or twice a week, then that is better than nothing. Now, the first few weeks or few days can be quite triggering for both of you because you're learning the technique, plus you need to get a lot of stuff off your chest. However, I call it heartfelt, non-judgmental, active listening. And what you need to do is sit and look at each other so that you are acknowledging one another. And you take it in turns. You might have two minutes or five minutes each. It's up to you. But um, you'll be going back and forth between one another and sharing what it is you have to share. So whoever goes first, they are allowed to say whatever they want. They can complain. They, you can say, I talk a lot about anger and hate. You can express how much you hate that person for what they did, blah, blah, blah. And the other person has to sit there and listen and not interject with ideas or excuses. They have to accept that this is how you felt. Um, now I might be getting first and second and third person all mixed up. So just bear with me. So the first person speaks, 
maybe for two to five minutes, put a timer on, you're allowed to say whatever you want about whoever you want. And the other person has to sit there and listen. When you're done, you need to let them know that you're done. That other person to show that they have actually heard you needs to paraphrase back what you have said. Because most people's complaint is that I say this, but I feel like they're not listening to me or I'm not heard. So that even builds more frustration um, and that conflict. And if you're like, yeah, that's right, then move on. Or if, you, if they haven't heard you properly, you're allowed to come back and say, no, 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 this is what I meant. And they go, okay, I see, this is what you meant. And inside they might be like, this is so wrong, but then with body language, they're not allowed to communicate that. They have to stay neutral. They have to create that safe space for you to be able to speak up about your frustrations, about how good things were, whatever. Then that's done, your partner, has their turn. They're allowed to say anything to you they want about how annoyed they are with you, how you made them feel, what you did wrong. And you have to sit there, keep eye contact with them, keep listening, active listening. And then when they're done, it's your turn to paraphrase back so that they know that they've been heard and you have understood. Now, if you have time, you might go back and forth a few times. It can be quite a lengthy process to start off with, which is why I say stick a timer on it. But as you get through this over a number of days or weeks, it starts to get easier and amazing changes can happen. And it is, I often say to people, is do these things, feel the discomfort of it. Most people would back off this or back off even talking to one another because it feels so uncomfortable and they think, why would I put myself in this situation? But I can tell you that everyone that I've given this exercise to who has done it and done it well um, is that they have noticed how much better their relationship is, is that they don't have as much conflict anymore. And it's even impacted their day-to-day -day passing conversations in the corridor when they are really busy and they can become aware of their own triggers. So... Don't be turned off if it takes a little while when you start, it will get easier. And the more often you can do it at the start, the better. With anything like pain in the body or even this verbal communication exercise, the trap that people fall into is things start to feel good and they drop off doing this. Um, that's the time where you can maybe just do it once or twice a week. So you go back and forth and yeah, it may, might take half an hour the first time or longer, but very soon it might just be 10 minutes or you don't even really have anything negative to say. It starts to turn into positivity. So once you've had a few turns each, it's really important to finish the session with love and appreciation for one another. And so you can say, I love and appreciate that you washed the dishes for me tonight. And the other person is listening and they have to receive it. They have to say, thank you. Um, then yeah, you just take turns, three love and appreciations that you share with one another. And that is because a lot of people, particularly the ones that have the love language of acts of service, feel like they're unappreciated, they're undervalued, and they don't realize what people are doing for them, is that it's first acknowledging the big obvious stuff, but it's actually been grateful that someone has done the mundane things for you, like lighting the fire or washing the dishes or putting your child to bed or picking something up for you. And yeah, sometimes we forget to acknowledge people for that when we get caught up in our own stuff. So you go back and forth and you talk, um, you say what you want to your partner. They actively listen. They don't interject with any solutions. They just hear you. They paraphrase back. Then you swap do it a few times, and then you finish off the session with three love and appreciations for one another, um, and you take turns with that. Now, another little spin on this, which Gavin and I have just introduced, which I've shared with a few people, is that we do a love and appreciation and a resentment. I don't recommend you get into that at the start because you're probably gonna have some tense conversations in the active listening stage, um, the first part. But we say, I love and appreciate that you blah, and I resent the fact that you blah. And 
it's quite amusing. Like we're in a space now, instead of getting triggered or taking it personally, it's like, cool, that's the way you feel. I accept it. Thanks. Um, but don't introduce that until your conversations start to get a little bit more pleasant. And if you are having issues in your relationship, I talked about relationship issues affecting the hips and pelvis. That is the physical manifestation of this emotional stress in life. Um, then I encourage you to try this, watch this video with your partner, give it a go, let it be awkward, feel a little bit silly, practice things until you get the hang of it. So that is my heartfelt, active listening, non-judgmental um, process that I recommend you go through with your partners and yeah, before you think that you're not meant to be together is make the time to try and resolve and communicate with one another and have that time to connect and save yourself a lot of grief in the future. <laughs> All right, have a great night and I'll see you next week.